This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Whenever the boy makes a good score and makes five or six big holes in a row, he disappears. 
You mean he just retired? Yeah, that's it. And whenever the door runs out, why, he starts operating again. It's a good system. Yeah. Not for me, it ain't. Uh, how much did he get on his recent rampage? Too much. That's why I don't think I'll ever find him. His last jobs have brought him over $400,000, all in cash. Well, that's enough to retire for life. Yeah, even for a guy like Slicer Evans. Mr. Watson speaking. Yes. Huh? His brother. Say, is it the rent? Uh huh. See? Yeah, I'd be glad to come over. Just give me your address. I'll tell Grant. Yeah, oh, thanks. Uh, right away. Goodbye. Say, maybe I'm getting a break. How's that? The man on that phone just told me he was Slasher Evans' brother. Really? Yes, he just came in this morning from the West Indies. Said that he'd heard his brother had escaped and that he had some information about him that might help me to find him. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, Commissioner. Perhaps Mr. Slasher Evans isn't as elusive as you think. Perhaps you all think it unusual that a man should be willing to give information that might result in the imprisonment of his own brother, but... Well, I have very good reason to do so. Why? My brother has always hated our family. And just as long as he is out of prison, our future is, in fact, our very lives are in danger. Uh, how did you learn of your brother's escape, Carl? Well, I was at my home in Trinidad. I heard it on a radio broadcast from the city. Is the family name Carlton or Evans? Uh, Carlton, the Evans is an alien. Uh, well, just what is this information you have for us, Mr. Carlton? Well, it's probably a shot in the dark, but I have an idea where my brother might be hiding. Yeah? Where? In a small town in Louisiana. What would he be doing down there? Well, you see, when we were children, we had a nurse here, a Creole, and she was very fond of my brother. After we grew up, she returned to a Louisiana home. So? So I know for certain that in the past, my brother has found refuge there. I think uh, if you were to send one of your men down there, Commissioner, you might turn up on him. Well, that isn't exactly a red-hot lead, Mr. Carlton. I disagree with you, Commissioner. I think it's a very excellent lead. Well... In fact, uh, if you don't wish to send a detective, I'd be willing to investigate it myself. Okay. Okay, Grant. I think I should warn you, Mr. Cranston, that if you do encounter my brother, be extremely careful. When he's cornered, he displays a talent with a knife that is turned in the kitchen. Oh, uh, thanks for the warning. I might also add that none of us in the family would grieve if he brought back word that my brother was. Yeah. Lavard, the nursemaid does, according to the man in the village. Shall we walk across the yard or swim? I'm sorry to have brought you out in weather like this, Martha. Oh, stop. Come on. Do you, do you really think we'll find the flash here? We might. But don't worry, Margo. I'm prepared for it. Now, we would better let Mrs. Lavard know we're here. What is it? What is it? What you want, eh? Are you Mrs. Lebar? Oui. Who are you? Uh, this is Miss Lane. I'm Lamont Cranston. Uh, I have never heard of you. Well, we've heard of you, Mrs. Lebar. We'd like to talk to you. How have you heard of me? From who? From John Cobb. Oh. oh, come in. Thank you. You went, Margo? Thank you. In here. And now you will sit here, please. Thank you. Out of the room, Denise, go. Oh, what a beautiful cat. Here, but... You come did in. not come here to admire my cat. Now you please get to the reason for your visit. Oh, well, we were sent here by John Cobb. Uh, you have already told me that. Denise, you get away from that woman. You leave her alone. Oh, that's all right. She's just rubbing against me. She seems to like me. Uh, he is a deceptive animal in them, Denise. First, she gives you her affection... Slash you with the claws. Oh? Perhaps she learned that trait from someone else. Who do you mean? The man who calls himself the Slasher. The Slasher? Yes, he's better known to you as John Carlton's brother. I, I don't know what you talk about. I think you do. Have you come here to question me? Is that it? I am seeking information, Mrs. LeBard. I also get no information here. I am not enjoy you or your conversation, Mr. Cranston. I must ask you both to leave. Now, just a minute, Mr. You hear what I said? Yeah, you leave. You leave at once. Who is there? 
Who is the thing to tell? Ah, Anil, <coughs> why are you here? <coughs> is something wrong? What's the matter with him? Oh, he's not the power of peace. Anil, is that letter for me? <coughs> oh, give it to me. Ah, ah, in his bed. Sakri nom. You people, why are you still here, eh? You get out of my house for the last time, I tell you. Get out. Very well, very well, Mrs. Labard. We'll leave him. Come along, Margot. I do. Uh, perhaps you'll give us the information we desire some other time. There will be no other time. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Well, what do you now? That message, Margot. I'm sure it was from the flasher. Really? Yes. And that man, Emil, must know where he's hiding. That's possible, Lamont. I think it's time for the shadow to enter this case, Margot. To trace our friend the slasher to his hideout. You see, sir, we thought the best place to get our information would be from the chief of police. Yes, of course. Now, who is it you're speaking? Uh, what's his name? His name is Emil. And his last name? I'm afraid we don't know it. Well, uh, we have many Emils in the parish. If you don't know the last name, I don't think that uh, I can... Perhaps a description would help. Well, yes, it will. Well, he's short, heavy set, and uh, has lost the power of speech. Oh, Emil Blondo, that's who you mean. Emil Blondo, eh? Now, what can you tell us about him? Well, I can tell you plenty. That man has caused this much trouble in his day. Much trouble. How? Until his accident several years ago, he was a member of one of the worst murderous gangs of smugglers and rum runners that I've ever encountered. Oh, I see. Uh... What was this accident? He was shot in a gang fight. The bullet penetrated his brain, robbed him of his memory, and his power of speech. And since that time? Well, he's been a little more than an imbecile. Living in a shack somewhere among the bayous. Well, where is the shack? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I've never bothered to find out. People seldom venture into the bayous. Even the police. Oh, then you have no idea where he lives? No. But you might watch for him in the village. I see. Well, uh, thank you very much, sir. Not at all, sir. I can't be more helpful. Well, that's all right. Come on, Mama. Good day, sir. Goodbye. Good day. Well, it's a dead end street. Yes. I guess we'll have to find out about Emil from our Mrs. Labarde. And that Margo is going to be a job for the shadow. That's what I Ah, what is wrong with you, Felice? Why you act so strange, huh? <laughs> what was that do, lad? I trust that you'll pardon this intrusion, Mrs. Labarde. Mm. See, no one, yet someone spoke. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Labarde. I spoke. Who are you? Where are you? I'm standing right here beside you. In the shadow. Mm. You shall know me by that name. Mm. I shall know you, but that name, a shadow. Yes. Ah, uh, it's come again. Again, I'm hearing voices. Ah, uh, let's pull myself together. Do not be alarmed, Mrs. Labarde. The voice that you hear is a friendly one. Why, why has this happened? I wish to talk to you. Talk to you about your life long ago. Very well, very well. I want to talk in particular about a young boy named Carlton. Everett Carlton? Yes. You you were very fond of that boy, weren't you? But of course, he was a darling boy. Your affection for him was so great that you have even forgiven the mistakes he made. Ah, yes, yes. You have sheltered him here in the past when he's come to you in trouble, haven't you? I am. He needed my help. And now you're giving him that help again? Yes. Where is he now? Where is Everett Carlton, Mrs. Labarde? I... I not know. But you've heard from him. You know that he's near. Oui, but I do not know where. Then it's Emil who knows his hiding place, is that it? Emil? Oui, Emil know. And where can Emil be found? At this jack. Where is that? In the bayous, at the point where two rivers meet. Are you certain that you're telling me the truth? Oh, yes, yes, I... Felix, what is wrong? Hey, wait... Oh, you can someone in this room, Miss Bartley. Yes, I'm speaking at someone. Yes, she sees me, Mrs. Abbott. Ah, then you are not a boy. You are human, a flesh and blood being who has tricked me into redeeming forbidden sacred. I did not employ any tricks, Mrs. Abbott. If I could see you, I would kill you or slash you to pieces. Just as your Everett Carlton might do, as he has done in the name of Slasher Evans. I not know what you mean. 
Men of what I told you before was true, dear. He had none of it. There is only one way to prove that, Mrs. Lepard. How? By paying a visit to the shack of Emil Blondeau. <laughs> And the meal mustn't hear the boat. I know. Do you think Mrs. the boss could have warned the meal about coming? She hasn't had time, Margot. God, doesn't it ever stop raining in this country? <laughs> well, those trees are so heavy overhead. It could have stopped four days ago and they'd still be dripping. What is that? Some sort of wild animal. Buyers are full of them. Oh. And that includes the human variety. Oh, that's nice to know. Oh, look, Margot. That must be the shack there. That mass of tumble down boards? Yes. Uh, you You'd better wait here for me. Why? I don't particularly trust our friend Emil. He was a killer even before that bullet lodged in his brain. Now with his mind warped, there's no telling what he might do. Well, I'd still rather go with you, Lamont, and wait alone here in this desolate place. All right, very well. Come along, then. I'll best approach it to enter quickly and surprise him. It's all right. Okay. Let's go. Just a moment. Stay where you are. Now, don't be alarmed. We're not going to harm you. We're your friends. Yes, we've come to help you. We, we were sent here by Mrs. Labarge. You remember us, don't you? We were present last night when you delivered that note to Mrs. Labarge. We, we are aware of the contents of that note. We've come in answer to it. Uh, is the is the in trouble? Is something wrong with him? Uh, just nod your head, yes or no. That nod must mean yes. Is he sick? Very sick? Then you must take us to him at once. Can you do that? Good. Come along, Margo. Our long trail is nearing an end. Come on. Have you any idea where he's he taking us? No. We'll just have to put our trust in a meal. Do you suppose that he really is leading us to the slash's hideout? There's no way of telling. We're practically at his mercy at this point, aren't we? Yes. We just have to hope that he believed our story. Why do you keep looking behind you? To keep an eye on Emil. A bullet in the back could be most uncomfortable. You think he might try to kill us? I'm not taking any chances. How can he even see in this choking mist? He knows this country very well. This will not have a mist hanging on a tree like a white shroud. Mm. Who would give me the tree? <laughs> That won't bother you much longer, Martha. Why, do you think we're getting out of it? No, but you won't see it. It'll soon be night. Oh, that's good. There. He's stopping the boat. We must be getting... Listen, Martha, right ahead. A tiny cat standing on the field. Yes. I guess we've reached our destination. Hey, grab hold of that duck, Margo. Oh, yeah. Look, Emil is motioning for us to get out. Yeah. Give me a hand, Margo. Yeah. There we are. Oh. Now, Emil... Will you lead the way? Come on, I don't like that grin on his face. Look. Is there someone lying on that cot? Yes. Is he sleeping? I don't know. Uh, there's, a, there's a candle on that table. Would you light it, Margo? I want to keep my eye on our two friends. It's all right. Here you are. Thank you. The eyes are closed. His face is chalk white. Well, the moment he's certainly too late. No, he, he's still breathing. Look at the face, Margot. It's Carlton, all right. Or I should say, Slasher Evans. Same nose, same broad forehead. Except for that long scar on his face and the red beard, this man could almost be John Carlton himself. Just his dad. His idol. Uh, uh, say. Say. What is it? Stay where you are, Sasha. Who are you? How'd you get here? <laughs> oh, I said this is your work, man. You brought him here. You're giving away my name, a hiding place. Well, nobody's going to get me. Look out, Lamont. Oh, he's got him here. Give me that gun. Oh, no, I've been free in life, and I'm going to be free in death. Oh, the candle. He's not the door. Sasha, you'll never get me. Never. Look, he's running out the door. Come back here, Evan. Right, Come on, Margot. He's not getting away. Billy is running along the bank of the river. Yes. You might as well give up, Thatcher. You're not going to lose us. Look out, Lamont. He's going to shoot. Margot, down quick. <laughs> you can play your game, Thatcher. Yeah, well, no bullet of yours will ever get me. Lamont, he's putting the gun to his head. He's going to see. Thatcher! Thatcher! Oh. It was his only way out, Margot. His body's fallen into the river. So I guess our job is done. 
That's the end of Slash Eleven. I'm very glad to you, Miss Lane and Miss Weston, for coming here to my apartment with your information about Slash Eleven. That's all right, Mr. Carlton. Incidentally, Lamont will be here in a few minutes. Oh, three old boys late again, huh? I hope he's not too tardy, Commissioner. I'm very anxious to hear more about his encounter with my brother. Well, I'll let Lamont tell you that when he arrives. Ah, but you're sure that he's dead? Oh, yes. Oh, did you hear that, Commissioner? I guess that's proof enough that you've heard the last of Flash Revan. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? A shadow. Yes. A Why? shadow. Why are you here? I am here, Commissioner, to contradict a statement that was just made by that young woman. What do you mean? I mean that Slasher Evans is not dead. Not dead? He is very much alive. What? Yes. He's in this city. In fact, Commissioner, he's in this very room. Who is speaking? Where is his voice coming from? I am the shadow, Mr. Cobb. And I'm quite sure that you've heard of me. How? From your fellow criminals. What are you driving at, Shadow? I'm trying to tell you, Commissioner, that this man is Slasher Evans. That's ridiculous. Not at all, Mr. Cobb. Or I should say, Slasher. I've investigated you quite thoroughly. And I learned some very interesting facts. Yes, what were they? I've been in touch with the authorities in Trinidad. Mr. Carlton's residence. And they told me that he had been away for five years. Had just returned recently. That was the length of your stay in prison, wasn't it, Slasher? Don't be fooled by this voice, Commissioner. Go on, Adam. Go on, Adam. I've also inquired into your financial background. And I found that although you have no means of support, no income, you still have lived lavishly. But why is he the slasher that he sent us on his own trail? Because he wanted it that way. He left an easy trail leading to the slasher's hideout so that someone could bring back definite proof that he was dead. Yes. Yes, that could have been his plan. You see, with the slasher legally dead, John Carlton can live respectably for the rest of his life. Or at least until the money that he gained by his criminal activities is gone. But how could he be here and in Louisiana at the same time? It takes very little time for a plane to reach Louisiana, Commissioner. And it took very little theatrical makeup to change his face and fool this young woman and her companion. You're pretty smart, aren't you, Mr. Shadow? But night's quite smart enough. Look out, Bartle. Let go of me. Take your hands off that girl, Sasha. This game is going to be my ace in the hole, see? It's going to be my field till I get out of here. Oh, no, I'm not. I'll get away. This sort of persuasion not to sit there. Put away that knife. Uh, yeah, I think you know what that means, Commissioner. I warned you a long time ago that the slasher always uses his blade when he's cornered. Well, you're not using it on me. Listen, sister. I usually get slashed my victim face. But if you don't do as I say, I'm going to change my technique for you and bury this blade in your heart. No, house. no. <laughs> what happened to the shadow? Where's all his talk now? I thought he was yellow. The minute I flashed his knife, he stepped out of that picture, didn't you, Shadow? I he ain't even here. Now listen to me, Flasher. Ah, you listen to me. I'm getting out of here, see? And if you make one move in my direction, I'll flash this game to bits. You wasn't there. No. Here it goes. No, you talk. Let go of my hand. Let go. Drop that knife, Flasher. Drop it. Stand where you are, Flasher. Stand where I am, eh? Don't get out of the turret. Stop it, Flasher. on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plots are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Does not pay the shadow.
shadow knows. <laughs> Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.